Welcome to the Government IT Podcast from Converge One Government Solutions, featuring expert discussions around cloud solutions, cybersecurity, modern workplace, enterprise networking, and customer experience for government and civil agencies. And now, here are your hosts, Ryan Heath and Julian So, Foster. thanks for uh, joining me again today, Ryan, uh, on the Gov IT Podcast. Really looking forward to going through this walkthrough with you uh, that we did with Zoom recently. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, so, yeah, we, we did, um, I guess, what they call the Executive Briefing Center Tour, and they took us through a lot of the functionality and features that have been built into the Zoom platform that go, you know, far beyond just the online meetings that most people are used to and that Zoom has become, you know, ubiquitous uh, for. So we have this uh, video that we recorded of the walkthrough, and uh, we thought it would be a good idea to break it down and go through some of the things that we saw in the video. Do you want to get us started there? Yeah. And you know what? The walkthrough was a pretty cool concept that they did where it actually shows how you would use the technology instead of just demoing it like you would typically get in an EBC type of environment you get to see the different atmospheres, how people would interact and the use case for them. The beginning of the uh, walkthrough was really cool. Um, you know, he walked us into sort of a, a reception area and uh, we were able to interact with uh, virtual reception. Uh, so the first thing that we're greeted with as we come into the Zoom office, in fact, we have this peppered throughout our organization, is Zoom rooms working in kiosk mode. This is the D10Me 27-inch touchscreen, um, and we have it, and it's completely configurable, uh, so I can, you know, any logo that I want on here, uh, and so and I'm going to you know, hit the button here, and I'm going to be presented with a submenu. And again, this is configurable. Uh, the, the most <laughs> sought-after job in America right now, IT support, security, catering, whatever it is, uh, I, I can get to it. So I've got customers using this not just as a reception device as I'm going to, but also I've got it next to the printer. How do I print? How do I use IT? Um, you know, how do I get deliveries? And so really simple. Hi there, welcome to Zoom. Hey Jeannie, good morning. Uh, can I bring the team on through for the tour? Absolutely, you're all set. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. See you later. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, many times I've been into large government buildings and there's been nobody at the front and you end up walking through the hallway trying to get somebody's attention and individual could be at lunch. You know, there's been nobody there and you're kind of wandering around trying to find your way to go. When the receptionist comes up on video, they can walk you through where to go, who to meet with and kind of get you checked in, which is very helpful, especially when you have a large campus environment. So it also has an interactive map, which allows you to you know locate where you're going, uh, easily kind of follow that path that they give you to uh, the meeting room or the office that you need to go visit. Yeah, I can see that being really, really useful in situations also where you have a large facility to manage, but maybe not enough personnel to operate a reception area or, or you know, um, attend a reception area. You could have a monitor, a display set up for virtual kiosk in each one of those, and then just have one receptionist or two receptionists managing an entire facility or multiple yeah. floors. Or, you know, even on coverage, lunch breaks, vacations, whatever it is. Right. Yeah, so that was really interesting. And then we walked over to the uh, another panel. He walked over to another panel where he was able to uh, look at the entire facility, all the available rooms, and uh, book uh, you know one of the rooms that he might have needed for any particular meeting. Now, the other button you would have seen is our new software. This is Zoom's workspace software. So uh, I'm going to launch that. And that brings up uh, the floor here uh, in San Jose. So uh, you can see all the spaces that I can view, reserve, and check in with. So uh, meeting room spaces, individual spaces, even spaces that don't have any technology. So this is our EBC wellness room where there is a, a massage chair. It could be a prayer room or a nursing room. Um, it doesn't have any tech in there, but I still want to be able to book it. I'm going to book this individual space here. And so uh, I'm just going to book it for the hour. Um, hit next. It will then ask, do I want to reserve our email? But uh, as we all know, all the cool kids are QR coding. So I'm just going to QR code in and it asks me, do I want to reserve the Poly CCX 700? Yes, I do. Do you want to talk about that? Well, yeah, I was just in a scenario uh, where that would have been very very handy. Uh, showed up to a very large meeting, you know, multiple groups attending this meeting. Typically, we're going to show up 30, 45 minutes early to a meeting like that to kind of prep and make sure that we're ready for it. Um, and to do that, we kind of get pushed into a side room. Now, trying to find that side room is usually challenging. So being able to just go up to a, a kiosk, touch, you know, what's available and automatically go there, book it, make sure that you're solid and, and ready to go and no one's going to bug you during that 30 minute or 45 minute prep time. That's very helpful. And that was just kind of an easy use case that I see. Yeah, I could see that as well. And then what was uh, what was really cool was then uh, he was able to go uh, to a room in this instance that just happened to be right next door, but they had a neat pad uh, on the outside of the room 
which he was able to use to control some of the room um, variables and then also see some of the environmental information, even CO2 levels, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so this is a, a neat pad. And just before I go into scheduling, this is a power over the Ethernet dedicated device, neat pad. We've standardized on the neat pad here at Zoom for a bunch of reasons. One, the environmental data that I can display on here, CO2 level, VO2 level, people count, temperature of the room, really important information as people trickle back into the office in this post pandemic world. The other thing I love about it as well is if I pan down the hallway, I can see at a glance which rooms are in or out of an active Zoom meeting uh, without having to walk down there. It's just a nice little feature like that. But again, I don't have to have this particular technology. I could be a, what iPad if I wanted, any Android-based device. And what's really cool about Zoom rooms is that the, um, this is, you know, I can have an unlimited amount of these. Now, let's say that I, I can't get access to this particular room. Again, I click reserve another room. It brings up that same interactive map that we were just playing with. Uh, and so I can get, you know, find a command room uh, so really really straightforward as well yeah which is really awesome just kind of highlights the platform um, all that stuff is now built in you know previously that was all kind of third party and integrated in and it'd be very expensive to maintain update and you know it was kind of a cool flash demo type of stuff but once people you know individuals put that in nobody would touch it and it was just there is stagnant and um, you know really didn't work too well but now that's part of the platform I definitely see the, uh, the use case for that well you know and speaking of you know how things work I thought it was really interesting when we go into the room after that, the simplicity of the uh, setup. I mean, you have all the functionality and capabilities that that you would expect or need in a scenario like that, um, both having, uh, you know, remote attendees and uh, teleconferencing, uh, people sitting around a table, but there was no starfish phone and there's no, you know, spaghetti coming out of the table with, all, you know, with all the cables. Do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, the technology that, that uh, was involved? Well, yeah, there? now that you're using proximity for everything, it, you know, you're in the room, everything is wireless connected, the proximity, the Bluetooth capabilities, wireless capabilities so you don't have all those controls anymore it doesn't clutter your desk you know you have one device which all comes out of where the tv panel is either the sound bar or something built into the, the panel itself like the d10 series it's very nice to have everything consolidated into one platform one piece of hardware so it was really imp impressive also, um, you know, when we were in the room and uh, they were using the all-in-one appliances, mm -hmm. um, you know, they showed something from Logi and from Poly. I can imagine all of this significantly reduces uh, the costs involved. It, right? it does. Yeah. So they also have the D10 and the uh, the neat screens. So, you know, with those cameras are built in, you got, you know, facial recognition, screen tracking, good audio built into those screens as well. Or you can go with the Logi bars, um, the big Poly uh, studios. So those are really nice because they have a lot of extra features. All right, so the first room that we have to show you here today, um, this is, uh, it's quite a big room. So it's, it's 35 feet deep by 15 feet wide. Uh, once upon a time, we had uh, just over $60,000 worth of AV equipment in here. You can see some of the remnants of that where we had mics and the like. And we boiled <laughs> that all down to, uh, this is the Logi Rally Bar. Um, for rooms of this size, um, we, some, you know, we sometimes swap them for demonstration purposes. So this is the Poly X70. Uh, we'd also recommend something like the Neat uh, Bar Pro, which I don't have here, but I will show you in another room uh, in a little bit. Um, and so just to kind of demonstrate like how simple this is, if I split these screens behind here, it's just to empower an ethernet cable. Right, um, so I don't need a uh, you know racks credenzas full of really expensive equipment, um, you know because uh, it, it's just we boiled it down to this one all in one dedicated device. Um, I think 16 you know channels of audio coming through those speakers, so they can really beam in on who's talking and focus the cameras that way as well. Multiple cameras to do facial tracking to really kind of pick up the active talker as well as kind of scanning the room for the next talker. So all those things that are really built into one soundbar um, currently is. It's Pretty neat. Yeah, that sounds really, um, really incredible. Uh, you know, again, it's it's um, remarkable how Zoom has so quickly evolved into uh, not just um, you know an, an all-in-one communications platform, but you know how the the technology has been integrated and simplified to such a large extent is uh, just really incredible, especially in such a short time yep. frame. They've done a really good job working with the uh, you know third-party vendors out there like Poly, you know, Logi, Neat, D10, and the list still goes on working with getting them you know certified so they know that those product lines are ready to go everything's kind of integrated into it so it's very easy to get up and going w without a lot of hassle we also demoed or, or talked about um, whiteboarding capabilities mm -hmm. uh, in that small room scenario although it's uh, you know I'm sure available in in whatever size room you have the, the, the proper technology yeah. in while we're here in this room uh, let's talk about whiteboarding real quick so 
Uh, not new, uh, not new to Zoom, but we did launch our new advanced whiteboard in May of this year, which is available across all Zoom products. <clears throat> but one of the things we just launched is a, a whiteboard in companion mode. Um, so uh, the ability to be able to, and again, I'm just using tracking, um, I'm now uh, able to, to whiteboard. Um, a new whiteboard is, um, is, is a, a permanent whiteboard. I can, uh, everyone can now annotate on this. Everyone who was a member of the, the core can, uh, can see it and be part of it. Um, and it's permanent, it's an infinite canvas. And I can send this out to you know, anyone, uh, you know, any which way I want. So that is gonna be supported within the, uh, the, the Zoom uh, room for Gov uh, it, you know, imminently. And so it, it's just a really nice and easy way of bringing whiteboarding into, uh, to, uh, to the room in a companion way. On the D10, you can push that to a whiteboard to do whatever you need on that whiteboard, as well as push that to iPhones, iPads, whatever devices that are in the room with proximity you can also see that. Um, so then at the end of the meeting, you can go and send that to everybody, uh, but it's kind of a interactive you know, screen that everyone could share and well, share and collaborate with. What does that look like? Uh, what does the technology look like in terms of being able to uh, possibly convert confined areas in open spaces uh, to, to a meeting area. Well, it really makes it to like a multi-use environment for whatever an individual wants to use that space for. You can automatically just start using that space in the way that you need to use that space where it's not a, a defined, you know, hard setup. So if you just need a whiteboard, you hit that whiteboard button and you kind of go with that. If you need video conferencing, you hit the button and you're in the video room. You can hit the other button and you're right into making a phone call. So whatever collaboration tools you need, the platform on the back end supports it and the devices are there right there, easy to use. You know, it's amazing. We were talking earlier about, you know, just how much Zoom is introduced into the platform and their products just in recent months. Uh, but, you know, overall in such a short time, the past couple of years, they've really implemented a lot. And to that point, we have a lot left in this video to walk through. So I think uh, that's a good place for us to pause today. And um, Ryan, I just want to thank you for taking the time to walk through this. And we'll be back in the next episode to cover even more. So thanks again for joining us, everybody, today. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>